This is the lecture on financial statements. It is the third video in the Introduction to Financial Statements series. The first video in the series talks about the forms of a business and users of financial information. The second video covers activities of a business. And this video covers the accounting equation and the financial statements, as well as additional financial information. The four financial statements are the income statement, retained earnings statement, balance sheet, and statement of cash flows. Preparing the financial statements are what some people love about accounting. If it's done correctly, things balance at the end and the statements all work together. They could still balance with a mistake, but most mistakes take things out of balance. There are four statements and it's important to know the formal things needed to set them up. And it's very important to know how to show the date because they're not all the same. When preparing an income statement, start by categorizing all of the information. As mentioned several times in the other videos, and you'll be sick of me saying it, terminology is important. I find it easiest to put things in categories before moving on. So it's easier if we label each item an asset, liability, equity, revenue, expense, dividend, etc. We mentioned equity before and we'll be more clear in a few moments, but there's two parts to e equity. The ownership part, which is the common stock, and the earnings part, which is retained earnings since it's the ownership retained in the business. Dividends reduce retained earnings because we're giving the owners a piece of the prior earnings. So after you categorize all the items and you know which items go on which statement, as well as which items carry from one statement to another, we can prepare the statements. It's easiest to start with the income statement because the net income or loss goes to the statement of owner's equity. This statement can also be called the statement of retained earnings, depending on how many equity items exist for the company. We'll call it the statement of retained earnings. And the cash balance on the balance sheet is carried to the statement of cash flows. So it's very important to know which categories go on which statements. All statements are important. This is the income statement and it's usually prepared first. It's important because past net income provides information to predict future earnings. Also know that some companies have such large income that their numbers may be shown in the thousands or the millions. An income statement can also be called the profit or loss statement or the statement of revenue and expenses. The income statement primarily focuses on the company's revenue and expenses during a particular period. Note that the date is for a year, but it could be a month, a quarter, etc. It's what happened over that period of time. It shows the revenue first, followed by the expenses. The difference, if revenue is greater than the expenses, is net income. If not, it would be a net loss. Either way, note that net income is double underlined. The purpose of the income statement is to show the difference between revenue and expenses. So we use a double underline to show our purpose. Revenue is what was earned during the year and the expenses are the cost of doing that business. If you look at the expenses, you might think supplies are an asset. But I mentioned using supplies, which were an expense. Both are actually true. Most companies buy supply in bulk and keep them on hand. When they buy them, they maintain a supply inventory of sorts and have an asset. As the supplies are used or the assets are used for the company's business, it becomes an expense. This is one of the examples we will return to in later videos. So I suggest you really pay attention to the wording around the problems. To make an income statement, we start with the heading, the company name, and yes, you state the name of the statement. There are many users who do not know what they're looking at, so it's helpful to tell them. Then note the date and the time period being covered. Next, you start with revenues. This company only has one revenue item, but some have more. Next, you list your expenses and give a subtotal. 
This can be done in columns to make it easier for the reader. Show the difference between revenue and expenses, which in this case is net income. And don't forget the accounting double underline. Just as an FYI, I do everything in Excel, so I don't worry about the math. I just worry about my formula. After we know the net income or loss, we need to know how much will be retained in the company. Since we start with one date and end with another, the time period is similar to the income statement. Retained earnings increase due to net income, but it also decreases due to dividends paid to owners. Please remember, dividends are not an expense. They are a payment of prior earnings, so they're on this statement and not on the income statement. To prepare this statement, you start with the same title format as in the income statement, and the time period is for a year, month, etc. Next, you add the beginning balance of retained earnings. This is the amount you're given. It's already in the accounts. As long as you see revenue and expenses, you know the retained earning balance is at the beginning of the period. Eventually, we'll close the revenue and expense account into retained earnings. Now, we'll close them for this year so we can start next year with zero revenue and expenses. So if there's a balance, the amount in retained earnings has to be a beginning balance. So you add net income to this beginning balance. You can use a subtotal. It's nicer since you're adding things here and subtracting later. Next, you subtract the dividends paid to owners. I keep saying we're giving them a portion of the prior earnings, and this shows the money comes from what was earned in the past or prior years. And finally, you end up with the balance at the end of the period. Since the retained earnings statement's purpose is to show retained earnings, it's double underlined. Before we get to the next statement, the balance sheet, I need to remind everyone of the accounting equation. This is the backbone of all accounting. The total of assets equals the total of liabilities and owner's equity. Things can happen on one side of the equation or both sides, but at the end of the transaction, the equation will always hold true. A company's balance sheet is a representative of the accounting equation. It shows the total assets equals the total liabilities and owner's equity. To prepare it, we start with the heading. The heading of a balance sheet must identify the company, the statement, and the date. Since the amount of cash changes daily, this statement is based on the assets, liabilities, and owner's equity as of the last day of the period. We list assets first. We list them in order of liquidity, or how quickly they become cash. The assets are followed by liabilities and stockholders' equity. Both are separate categories, so they each have their own total shown. Finally, you double underline the total assets and the total of liabilities and stockholders' equity. The purpose of the balance sheet is to show the balance in the accounting equation, so double underlining it shows its purpose. Now for the statement of cash flows. It covers how cash was received and used for the year, so the date reflects the time period. And notes the activities of operating, investing, and financing are used. The statement shows where cash came from and how it was used, and the difference between in and out was more cash in, the difference is called cash provided for. If there's more cash out than in, it's cash flows from. So the wording's important. Notice that the beginning and ending cash balances are shown. The ending cash balance will be the amount in the balance sheet at the end of the year. So notice how the statements tie together. The net income is carried from the income statement to the retained earnings statement. The ending balance in retained earnings from the retained earnings statement is carried to the balance sheet. And the cash, the ending balance in cash from the cash flow statement, is the same as on the balance sheet. Those were the four financial statements. So you can see some information can't be explained thoroughly with just showing the numbers. So there's several places where other information is disseminated. In another video, we discussed who the users were, and you shouldn't be surprised to find creditors require financial statements. Also, U.S. companies that are publicly traded must provide an annual report to shareholders. This annual report must show the financial statements we just discussed. It also must show the notes to the financial statements. The notes are where management provides 
information about the policies as well as other information needed by users. There's more detail and management's opinion as well as their spin in what we call the MDNA, the Management Discussion and Analysis. And finally, there's an audit report. An auditor is an outside accountant who gives an opinion on the financial statements being reported in accordance with the reporting standards. The auditor does not give an opinion on the company. If the financial statements are in accordance with the standards, there's enough information for users to develop their own conclusions. The audit opinion, though, has to be called an unqualified opinion. And the only thing I really want to say about the audit report and then the unqualified opinion is that an unqualified report is a good thing. A lot of time people forget their terms. Unqualified does not mean the same as not qualified, and it does not mean something is subpar. It means there's no qualifications. So if you've heard someone say, let me qualify my remark, or that information is valid if you're talking about small companies, those are qualifications of the information they provided. An unqualified report means the financial statements and notes follow the generally accepted accounting principles. Nothing else needs to be added and no qualifying statements need to be made. As a CPA, I also want to point out that this report is based on an audit and may only be done by a CPA. So this covers the accounting equation and the balance sheet as well as the other financial statements and financial information. If you need additional information, check out the other videos or send me an email.